50 years ago today, I stepped foot in my first martial art class. And little did I know that that decision of a 10-year-old little chubby kid in southeastern Wisconsin was going to be the biggest and most profound decision I ever made in my life. Hi, everyone. Chris Snatsky here with Black Belt Leadership Speaking and Coaching. And welcome to a special edition of the Mind of the Champion Tip of the Week. September 13th, 1973. I remembered that date like it was yesterday. It was my brother's fifth birthday, and I had to beg my mom to let me try out this new thing called Korean karate. And I remember going into that class for the first time and seeing these amazingly powerful and strong movements and literally feel like I came home. You know, like many young lads at that time, I was enamored with the TV show that was on at that time called Kung Fu, where David Carradine, he played the uh, role of the Shaolin monk, Kwai Chain Kane, and when he was walking across the American desert, he'd come to these little towns and the bad guys would try to beat him up and he'd take care of him using his Kung Fu. And when you're 10 years old, it's the coolest thing you've ever seen in your life. And so that passion started with me at such a very young age. And I've been spending the last several weeks just reminiscing and reflecting on that initial decision as well as the last five decades and how martial arts has impacted me, and hopefully I've been able to impact the world. And so what I wanted to do today is kind of talk about five key insights that I've gained from my martial art journey over the last five decades. Because obviously when you do something long enough, you're gonna hopefully pick up some lessons along the way. So that's what I wanna share with you today. So number one, number one is do what you love. Find something that you absolutely just love to do and absolutely lights you up. I mean, you may not be like me, where when I was 11 years old, I wrote an autobiography as a fifth grade project, and I said I wanted to be a martial arts instructor. So you may not have that all the way back in your history, but I believe each and every one of us has a gift inside of us that we are here to share. And many times that uh, coincides with things we absolutely love to do. Now, as we get older, many times we put those dreams aside and we don't follow up on that. And we look back at our lives and we go, wow, I really wish I would have maintained that. Well, what I'm here to, to tell you is it's never too late. And if there's an activity that you absolutely love to do, if there's a service that you love to provide, go ahead and lean into it. Because when you base your life off of that, it just brings a whole new level of enrichment and power and peace to what you're doing. So do what you love. Number two is challenge yourself. You know, like in martial arts, we, you know that there's always challenges going along, whether it's physically, mentally, spiritually, et cetera. And I always found it's interesting that in our lives as human beings, we're constantly looking to bring ease to our lives, right? If you look at, at what's happened in technology, so much of the wonderful technology that's been brought about has been to make our lives easier. But what I've really found is when I'm my happiest and when I see my students and my coaching clients the happiest is when we're involved in something that challenges us, something that gets us moving, something that we can look forward to. And I even think that in some of the most difficult times that we've ever had in our lives, and even though during that time we want to give it all away and we want to make it stop, when we get done and we get through to the other side, it's some of the times in our lives that we are most proud of that we were able to lean into those challenges, that we were able to lean in and find the strength inside of ourselves to move through it. So as we grow, as we move into our life journey, find things that can challenge us. What are the things that challenge you? And where do you have an opportunity to really lean into them? Number three, practice diligently. Practice diligently. You know, again, we're in a very fast food society, so things happen and they go in and out and, and in and out of style. And many of us start and stop, start and stop many different things. But where I find the people that are the happiest are the ones that find practices that they love to do and they continue to practice them diligently. I'm currently reading a book called Ikigai by Hector Garcia and uh, Frances Marcellus. And what they do is they have been studying the places in the world called blue zones. These are places in the world where people routinely live to 100 years and beyond, the, the highest life expectancies on the planet. And one of those particularly is off the island of Okinawa. 
And what they find when they look at these people who are well into their hundreds and living these amazing lives is they eat well and they have great community and they move and have, do exercise each and every day. But what they also have is an ikigai, which is a life purpose that they practice diligently. Whether they're practicing in their gardens or they're, they're, they're sharpening swords or whatever they decide that to be, they're doing that on a regular basis and they're finding joy in the moment. So what are the things that you love to do? What are the, the practices that you can get absolutely lost in? And have you maintained those or have you given them up and have they kind of gone by the wayside as your life has grown and expanded, got a little busier? And where do you have an opportunity to lean back in? Number four is give back, give back. You know, when I first started martial arts, it was all about me. It was all about the skills I wanted to create. It was all about you know, delivering that perfect sidekick. And what I realized was, is that served me well because it taught me some great lessons in terms of perseverance and commitment to excellence. But as I've aged, and I have, <laughs> and my kicks aren't as fast as they used to be, and my flexibility isn't as great as it used to be, what I find joy in now is being able to give back and, and teach students and use the martial art philosophies and elements of leadership that I've learned and share those with others, whether they're direct martial arts students or people in the business world or, or when I go and I speak to teenagers, it's being able to give back. You know, when I'm training my own black belts, I always say that when we're developing skills in the martial arts, it, it has the ability to set us apart. And that's when I channel my, my inner Uncle Ben from Peter Parker, and uh, Spider-Man fame, where he says, with great power comes great responsibility. And what that's always meant for me is, for instance, martial arts is much, much more than the kicking and the punching and the fighting, but it was using it as a vehicle for people to find the power that they had within themselves and giving them the tools and the permission to be the best that they could be. So where do you have an opportunity to give back? Because I can guarantee you when you do, the gifts are gonna be coming much greater to you just by having that experience. And then finally, it's be grateful and savor the moment. You know, I often tell my martial arts students that nobody gets the black belt by themselves. Even myself, even my instructors and my instructors' instructors, we always had people that were there to help us. And so when we are living life from a standpoint of gratitude, and we're grateful for things the way they are right now, regardless of whether it's the way we want them or not, what it has a tendency to do is bring us to this state where we're looking for the good in everything that we see. And when we look for it, whatever you're looking for, you usually find. And I'd be remiss if I didn't take this time in talking about gratitude to recognize some of the people that have been the most impactful on, on my martial art journey. Now, I'm not going to be able to name everyone here because there's too many to do in this segment, but you're going to click, if you click the link that I'm going to leave below, it's going to have a, um, a blog that I've written on this, and I'm going to be noting a lot of the people. And if you've been tagged on uh, this Facebook Live, you're probably one of those folks as well. But let me start with, uh, with my instructors. I want to first recognize my first instructor, Terry McNichol. Uh, Terry, uh, he's a person that taught me the value of creating solid foundations and basics, not only in my martial arts, but also in my life. To my Taekwondo father, Grandmaster Jake Haley, who uh, <laughs> he was with me in so many important times in my life. And he was the man that taught me that power and strength could be combined with compassion and service to, not, to others, which is really the basis of mastery. And then my kickboxing instructor, Grandmaster Bill Superville Wallace, who taught me that becoming a champion not only meant always striving for personal excellence, but also treating people with kindness, compassion, and respect. Number two is my family. Now, I wouldn't be here, of course, without my mom, Mary Anginitis, my stepdad, um, Dan Janitis, as well as my late dad, Butch Natsky. And, you know, they supported me on this journey all the way through. Also, my, my sister, Karen Sale, and my late brother, Danny Natsky, who uh, I, they not only were my siblings, but they were, they were also my students. And that was a whole experience. But thanks for being there for supporting me. For my sons, Jason and Josh, who have probably spent more hours in a martial arts studio than they ever wanted, but really inspired me. <laughs> to be the best I could be so I could inspire them to do the same. 
And then finally to um, my former wife, Teresa Jensen, without her love and support, the Family Martial Arts Center would have never come into being. Third, I want to, I want to acknowledge all my contemporaries. These are my training partners that beat me into shape. These are the people in my professional martial arts life that taught me how to run a martial art business and strive for excellence in all that I did. And just the people that were constantly there as a reminder for me to take my game up to a different level. I thank all of you. And then finally, I want to thank my staff, my students, and the black belts that I've been able to develop throughout the years. You know, some of the most proud moments that I've had in my life um, and my legacy is creating the Family Martial Arts Center in 1995. And then a couple of years after that, the Colorado Alliance of Martial Arts. And there are just so many people to thank that I'm not going to do it here. Go ahead and read the blog. But these are, first of all, you know, the leaders within that organization that have constantly supported me in bringing this um, to the forefront. Um, the staff that I had at, at Family Martial Arts Center, which was second to none, that when we were at our peak, I would, have, uh, I would often say I would match them up against any martial arts staff in the country. To the martial arts uh, team extreme, uh, demonstration team, which basically redefined how to do martial arts performance here in the state of Colorado and as we traveled around the state, inspiring others. And then finally, oh, there are my notes. And then finally, I want to speak to all of the tens of thousands of students that I've been able to teach throughout the years, particularly the ones, the 1,800 plus students who have gotten to Black Belt and beyond. It's been my absolute honor to work as your instructor and pass on to you the lessons that I've learned. I know as I've been sharing this, I probably left something out, but I just wanna say, I, I'm not only sharing this message with you today with great joy and a sense of accomplishment, but also with great humility, that I've been blessed, that God blessed me with the, the interest in the martial arts and and the, and the passion for it and then also provided me the avenue to create this into a lifestyle and then later on a profession where i was able to give back to the community in ways that i never thought possible so thanks so much for listening i have no idea what's going to happen in the next 50 years i intend on being here and i intend on still kicking but in the meantime i just want to thank you for listening and hope that you find the passion in your life like I've been able to, to find and be able to share it in whatever way you can to make the world a better place. So this has been Chris Natsky with Black Belt Leadership Speaking and Coaching. And we'll see you next time on the Mind of a Champion Tip of the Week.